We are towards the bottom of the page, Kufa Mudalef, Shiur Lilunishma Sobimur Menachem Menakiva, the Ilunishma Sor Bas Moshe, Ule Ilunishma Sus Bas Sholoim, Ve Lufuas Koil Israel. We are now looking for Yen Kufa Mudalef towards the bottom of the page. We are looking for the source of the words of Rishlakish. Rishlakish showed money to the money expert by the name of Rabbi Elozo, the Amoira, and he said, you know, I'm relying on you. By the way, I forgot to tell you yesterday, why did Rishlakish say, I'm relying on you? Some Rishonim say that the money changer is only liable for mistakes if the person told him, I'm relying on you. In other words, if he showed money to the money changer, then, and then it came out that he basically misled you. He said it's good, well, really it was bad. Then some Rishonim say, he's always high. If I go to an expert and I show him, he should be responsible for what he says. Other Rishonim, they say no. And Toysus brings down both opinions. Toysus says that there are those who say no. Rav Alphas says, Radarif, he says, only if the client said, I am relying on you. I'm not just interested in your you know, general opinion. You no, know, as let's say I have a friend who's, uh, who's an engineer. You show him a crack in the wall and you say, ah, you happen to be here, you know, we're having a nice time playing cards together. Ah, oh, you're an engineer. Can you have a look at the wall? He's not giving you necessarily his professional opinion. Well, yes or no, but it's not so clear. He's not right now wearing the engineer hat. You're asking him as a friend. So according to the Reef, only if you actually told him, listen, I am relying on you and this is a professional opinion, this is appraisal, then you then if he makes a mistake he has to pay one more point i want to mention before we continue uh you uh, british people were right and i was right the way i answered you you're asking a good question what's a big deal if the money is the wrong kind of money use another one so really the amsha shloima says that we're talking like i said that he's supposed to get this money from someone else he's showing this coin because his employer said i'm going to pay with this coin okay then the money changer said oh that's an amazing coin and he was paid by his, by his boss, by his employer, by that coin. And then when he went to the boss and said, that's not a good coin, the employer surprisingly told him, I don't care. And this is a goy alarm, could be some shaget, um, violent person who doesn't care, doesn't abide by the rule, wouldn't go to Jewish based in, or he ran away to Hul, you know where Hul is? Yeah, good. Yeah, he ran away to America. And the kids are, it's a case in which the, the loss is a real loss. But then we discussed the fact that it's a gummy. It's not real Nezek because the guy's only speaking. He only said, I think this is bad, good. So then what? Why is that called a chiyuv? Rishlakish said, I follow the opinion of Rabbi Meir, says Rishlakish. And therefore, I would tell you, my friend Rabbi Loza, that you will be liable in case you, make him, you made a mistake because I believe in Rabbi Meir that says that Garmi is chayev. A Garmi level of Nezek is something that you have to pay for. But then we were looking for, how do you know Rabbi Meir said that? Where did we find a statement by Rabbi Meir that says that Garmi you have to pay for? So we tried one thing, we tried another one, didn't work out. We are now looking for the third case. Elaho Rabbi Meir, second to last line, the penultimate line of Kuf Amud Aleph. Ho Rabbi Meir, that's not. The following Rabbi Meir, the following Rabbi Meir, um, yeah. Uh, you know, when we get to the Mishnah, we're soon getting to the Mishnah. Yeah, this is really the end tale of yesterday's year, and then I'll hear questions. Oh, Rabbi Meir, that's not. This is the Rabbi Meir that will tell us that you have to pay for Gomi. As we all know, one of the Torah prohibitions is Kilaim. If a person <coughs> has Geffen, which is a vine growing next to the tvua, next to the, I'm not going into all the details. It's not any vine, it's a, it's a vineyard. Five, you have to have five vines together in a specific shape. And let's say very near them or amongst them grows tvua, cereals, wheat or barley or something. And then you are for that. A person was mesakech, he basically moved and he uh, created like a, like a like an awning of Geffen, overhead Geffen, over the top of the tvu of his friend. I have my vine, 
and you have your, whatchamacallit, you have your uh, grain, thank you, cereals, grains, and I actually took my geffen and made it, caused it be'adan to start growing on top of, above the head of your tvua. We're not going now to Yilchus Kilaim, but that's Kilaim. And that is actually monetary loss. That's actually something that translates into money. Because once the Kilaim grow together, one, one of two hundredths, one two hundredths part of the entire growth, if they together grew in the ground, boom, 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 a little bit, then both yours and mine, and let's say I'm the innocent victim, I'm a good guy. I have my my wheat and barley there, and you created kilaim that make both types be osur ba'chila ba'ano, you're not allowed to benefit from kilaim, so you're causing me a damage. I raise the kiddush. Kiddush is not holy. Kiddush means became osur, because kodesh is something that's forbidden from you. The chayev, oh, so you see that the person who, what did he do? He planted the vine and started whatever, inclining it towards the wrong direction. He has to pay for the Nezek. Now that's not the Maise Be'adayim. Why? Because he planted it now and it's slowly starting to grow. So the Havamina is that that slow process of growth, just like we spoke yesterday about the cooking, maybe a slow process is not called Maise Be'adayim. I press a button and that starts the ball rolling, but it's a, small, it's a very slow ball until the thing grows. So maybe that's not called Maise Be'adayim. So maybe it's Gurmi. Even though it's Gurmi, yet Rabbi Meir, voila, is the one who says, you're Chayv. How do you know it's Rabbi Meir? Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir. An anonymous Mishnah, you know, is always Rabbi Meir. Bechayev, no, so maybe that's Gami. And says the Gemara, no. Awesome, Nami, there too, just like in the case of cooking, Ka'ovid Be'adayim. If he planted it with his own bare hands, with his ten fingers, and he had in mind, <laughs> I'm going to have my Geffen going over the head of the Chita, or maybe if he didn't have it in mind, but he knew it's going to happen, yeah? So the Maisa, this is Maisa Be'adayim. Slow process is not called Gomi. It started, and that's a normal way. So even in today's technology, as far, maybe I'm wrong, as far, actually they can make trees grow quicker. It's not true what I'm saying. They can make trees grow quicker, but still, it takes time to grow. That's a normal way. So that's called Maisa Be'adayim. If I plant something that disturbs somebody else, whichever reason, that's a Maisa Be'adayim. It takes a long time. That's the normal way. That's not called Gomi. That's the way the Nezek works. You know, if I punch somebody on the nose, I'm not going to say, it's not my severe dime because it's not a gun. That's a normal way. That's the power of my fist. Yeah. Hello, Abimeir. Finally, we found a source for Abimeir that learns it, Gomi. Not a my severe dime, but a relatively indirect my severe The Tanya. This is the final, final uh, solution. Mechitza sakerm shenifretzo. We had that at the beginning of Bove Basra. Let's say one person has kerem as vineyard, and the other person has a white field, which means what white field? Talovan, a field of wheat, barley, on any cereals and grains. And between them, there's a very kosher lachik mechitza. Eh? A good trivia question. When do you have to have mechitza according to aloha? Not only between men and women in shul or in the function, you have to have it between the vine and the other types in the field to avoid kilaim. Once you have the mechitza of a certain height, then even if underground, it could be an unhealthy mixture. We're not concerned about it. We're not going to the details now. So all of a sudden, there was a breach. Something happened. I don't know who came, a beaver, a monkey. Somebody came, and by itself, earthquake. And all of a sudden, there's a breach in the wall, a zelo tov. That's not good. And now, oimel. So now what happens? If the breach will stay there, and there's an unhealthy opening between them, and they'll grow together, the vines on one side and the wheat on the other side, if they're going to grow together more than one, one to hundred, it's going to be awesome. Oimer, loy, gdo. The owner of the wheat field tells the owner of the, of the, vin, of the vineyard, you have to gdo. You have to fence. You have to rebuild the fence because the vines, they go into the territory. The vines, their roots are much, much longer than the wheat. The wheat is almost nothing. The vines are the more aggressive, active ones. Hello, mister. I have, I'm Shomer Halocho, and I thought so do you. I have the wheat field, and your vines with that breach are causing my wheat to become ulcer. You have to, you have to build a fence. Nifretzo. So let's say it did. Nifretzo. Again, again, it, again, it breached. Again, it broke. Again, the person, the white, the, the wheat guy, not the white guy, the wheat person tells the vine person, excuse me, mister, you have to build it again. All very good. Then came the third time, and the vineyard person says, 
I've had it already with your nonsense. And he's Yaish. No, he's not a wrestler of a hostage. He doesn't think any Yush Ba'olam Klal. He says, I'm Yaish. I don't have coffee this anymore. I just live with it. I'm going to have my coffee now. Yeah? So what happens then? He's Yaish Man of Eloi Godro, and he sort of purposefully did not re rebuild the fence. Yerushalayim HaBnuyo. Did not rebuild it. Arei Zekidesh. At that point, then it's Mekadesh. Then he was Mekadesh, meaning that both types became forbidden. If they grew together while the thing was breached, they grew together that level, that one two hundredths of the thing. Kiddush v'chayev b'achrayusoi. Wow. So now the person who's been passive, what did he do? He didn't create the breach. And what was he? He was pass passive aggressive. They call it in psychology, yeah? He says, I don't care. You know, at some point, I just don't care. I'm having my tea. I'm having my coffee. And you deal with it. It's not my Christ. So then he has to pay for the loss. He has to pay for the loss. That's Gami. He can't call that Nezek Be'adaim. He literally, from the beginning till the end of the process, just did not do anything. So big Kiddush. We blame him for not doing what he was supposed to be doing. That's Gami. Why is it Gami? Because on one hand, there's no Maisa Be'adaim. No hands, no hands, right? I'm having my coffee, looking at my computer. It's all the guy, go jump in the lake and it's not my business, your stupid wall there. I don't care about Kilaim anymore. I don't know what happened to him. That's the passive, not nice to be dying. On the other hand, the Nezek is very clear. The Nezek here is immediate and clear. They right now are slowly but surely growing together, the two types together, making it financially also also to use. By the way, Kilaim are also even Bahano. You can't even take benefit from them. That's a Shane Gezunte Gami. We found it, Yuroka, Yuroka. We found the Gomi, and we see that Rabbi Meir holds that you are Chayev. Therefore, we see Rosh Lakish was right. The Rabbi Meir's of opinion that Gomi is Chayev. And Rosh Lakish tells his friend Rabbi Lezer, I follow that opinion. And if you give me the wrong information, I'll see you in court. That's what Rabbi Shlakish said. Not exactly in those words, but that's basically Rosh Lakish's message. And Baruch wants to tell us something before the new mission. Interesting Mishnah. The Mishnah is not as difficult as it seemed to Mechibrusan at the beginning. The Mishnah basically portrays your three cases, three variations in a theme. The case of the Mishnah, I'm giving you an introduction. A person gave wool, I guess back then it was very common. A person gave a plain, uncolored, undyed wool to the dyer, the painter, and then something went wrong. There are three different scenarios where something can go wrong with the tzemer, tzemer is wool, and the seva, which is the color. If we divide it to three sections here, the ratio, the metzias, and the seifa, all will be well. The only confusing thing is, the Mishnah keeps saying he gives him, and we don't know who gives who. <laughs> so, Be'ezlas Hashem, I hope I'll be able to guide you through this. Case number one. Case number one. Hanoi sent tzemer le'tzaba, Somebody gave a tzemer, wool, to the tzaba, to the painter. And he just burnt it like somebody can burn the soup. In other words, he puts it in this hot uh, concoction of colors there, yeah? And it's in a, hot, in a steaming, boiling pot. And he just overstayed, yeah? The, the, he left it there for too long, so it burnt. So now he has like wool, which is not burnt like in flames or, or with ashes, but it's like, I don't know, darkish, disgusting. It's just plain nezek. He, there is no shevach whatsoever. There's no gain, nothing improved here, whichever direction. It's worse than it was before. Then, nois and Lloyd made simroi. Who's giving who? Obviously, the artisan, the painter, he gives the owner, he gives him the worth of his wool. He basically destroyed the wool of the owner. He has to pay for the wool. You may ask, what's a Chiddush? Of course it's a Chiddush. Don't you remember? Oh. If we say that, remember? If we say that he painted it beautifully, and after it was beautifully painted, died, then he overdid it, and then he burnt it, then we'd say what? Then do we only then say that he pays him for the Tzema? Because maybe the whole Shevach belongs to the Uman, because the Uman is the one who owns the, 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 the better part. There was a question back then, there was a Chiddush. But we're not discussing it now. Case number one, to keep it simple for our Mishnah, is the case of he burnt the wool, 
pay me the wool, stay with this disgusting damaged goods, and let's just depart as friends. Case number two. Svoi ko'ul. Ko'ul really means ka'ul with an ayn. The Mishnah switched Aleph to ayn. He painted it ugly, which means poor quality, as my British Chavrusa calls it. He just used poor quality color. He used the leftover of the color. He did not do a good job, which means he did paint it the same color as I asked him. I wanted green, and he painted it green, but uh, ah, it's not good color. It's not the paint. It's not the dye with the sheen that I wanted, and he knows it. So basically, he painted it not a good way. Now, two things. First of all, is there a shinui here? Oh, shinui, shinui, shinui. The whole mission is all about shinui. There's no shinui, which means even if you look at the guy who's behaving like such a lackadaisical, too relaxed about it, lax, and he is like a gazlon, possibly, maybe, he's, he's not doing the right job, there's no shinui because green is green. Green of lesser quality is what it did. So what's going to be now? What should I do? Rabbi, I went to that painter. Instead of giving me the shiny good green, he only used the leftover, you know, uh, at the end of the, of the pot, at the bottom of the pot. So what do we do? We say like that, which means, first of all, to make it very clear, <laughs> who's giving who? Mr. Painter of Class B painting of poor quality gives me the wool, which is of lesser quality, and go like, okay. Now, how much should I pay him for his bad quality work? I'll pay him the minimum. I'll pay him the minimum. I'll give him only the minimal thing, which means there is improvement here. Let's talk numbers, numbers that I can understand. <laughs> that Samuel originally white and plain was worth how much? 200 shekels. To make it nice and bigger, 200 shekels, okay? I wanted him to paint it with such paint they would get it to 1,000 shekels, yeah? That was my idea. I wanted green and nice and green, 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 yeah? 1,000, I'm a green guy. And then he painted it with what? With something that now is worth 400 shekels. So there is Shebuch of 200 shekels, yeah? But that's not El Hanar, Zehis Palalti. No, it's not what I was looking for. But there is a Shebuch, but not the Shebuch. How much do I pay him? Well, also, he also had to use paint, right? He had his materials that he used. By the way, I'm not paying him his salary for sure. I'm not paying him. I'm not paying him the overall amount that I told him I'll pay him. Let's say you do the whole job, you get it to a thousand, and I'll pay you, I don't know, a thousand one hundred or whichever amount. That's for sure I'm not paying him. He does not deserve to get his sachal. He didn't do the job right. He messed up. He flunked it. How much do I give him? I give him the lesser of the two, meaning, yitzia means the expenses that he had. If the current shvach of the bed, the bed kind of green is 200, like I told you, and the paint that he used is less. He used paint worth 100. No, so let's say, see, I'll give him the 100. I'll give him the only, the expenses that he had, the 100. If, misken, shlamazel, <laughs> the expenses that he had was more than the shvach. The shvach is 200. Let's stick to that. But the dye that he used were worth 300. Misken, stupid, yeah. He had, what? 300 of the expenses that he had, the paint, the electricity, I don't know. And there's 200 shvach, less and less shvach. I'll give them 200 shvach. I will always play the game of giving him the less because he didn't do the job right. He's not koine b'shinui. He doesn't keep it. That's for sure not. Who keeps it? I keep it. Unhappily, but Lamaisa, I'll keep the wool. There are other options which I'm not going into now, but that's a posh shot of the Mishnah. There's other ways, but that's a Poshib Shat Mishnah for sure. We've been through it a few times, this Mishnah. I'll pay the guy who's bad boy in inverted commas. I'll pay him how much? The less of whichever is less, either the shvach or the expenses. That's number two, and everyone agrees to that. Case number three. Case number three is a matter of taste. I asked him, listen, Rabbi Painter, I want this 200 shekel wool. I'm coming in a few days' time. I want it to be red. You know, I'm a big communist. You know, yeah, now Putin. And what? I want this to be a thousand shekel kind of red. And then he came. It's Vos Shachoy. The guy says, no red. is not sneezed, whatever. He decides to paint it black. He painted it black and he thought, no, the person wouldn't really mind. I'm fuming. 
Now, there's no loss here as per se. Why? Because they're both very good quality. It's not that he made the quality lesser quality, poor quality. He painted it in the best black that there is. You know, the very hurry black, very this. Instead of red, it's black. But they're both thousand shekels, but that's not what I was looking for, Rabbi. Shachov, it's boy Odoin. I wanted him to paint my, my suit black, and he painted my suit red. Can you imagine me coming to call of the red suit? Yeah? What? He died. He didn't color it, he dyed it. Paint doesn't stick. I agree with you 100%. Okay, it's too well, right. Paint is like this. Okay, the kid, sir, he dyed it red. So the, the client wants him to die. He wants the painter to die, the dyer to die. So what do you do now? Yeah, it's the same quality, but uh, completely different. He dyed it black. Yeah, or the other, whichever, is the, whichever color I don't want. Rabbi Meir, Oy Meir, Rabbi Meir says, no, it's not made him, Oy. Ooh. Rabbi Meir, which we discussed before, says, Shinui. Listen to this. Say the Achroinim, or even before, the moment he changed from what he's supposed to do, I gave it to him. It's in his house now, in his workshop, right? It's in his reshus, it's in his domain. As long as he's doing my job, always thinking of doing the job for me, he's my shaliach. And that corner in his workshop is, in a way, it's like not mine, but he's working, it's my embassy there. Once he says, ah, ha, ha, this client wants red, mm, I'll make it black. Eh? He's acting against me, that's like a gazlan. It's the ill all thing is gazela. Wow, retrospectively. A gazlan who changed from red to black is koine beshinui. Koine beshinui. Now the wool belongs to him. To who? To the Ganev. Oh, what does he have to give me? Nois and Loy made Simroy. Here, Nois and Loy means the Gazlan dyer has to give the client, yeah, the one who ordered, the Balabai says to give him the 200 shekels worth of the Tzemel. Basically, he's, it's as if he's a classical case. It's as if he stole my white, pristine 200 shekels wool took it to him, retrospectively, that's how we look at the whole thing. He changed it. I don't care if he changed it to red or green. He didn't know what I wanted. And therefore, it's Ki'ilu, he stole it, and it's Shinui. Shinui Koine, we learned for the past half year, Barak. Shinui Koine, he'll keep now, the, the more strict right-wing hand uh, right -wing people are not so happy now, because he's gaining. He's Be'etz and paying for the undyed wool, and he's possibly gaining, because the color that I don't want, and he does want, he can now sell it to other customers. Rabbi Meir says, we don't cancel him. Rabbi Meir says, it's not real. Mezid, the Chronim explained, Rabbi Meir said before, Mezid, not a Mezid Rosh. He's like very uh, uh, careless. He says, okay, black, red, who cares? You know, <laughs> so that who cares means that he's like a Pasha, but not a Mezid Rosh. He's, Rabbi Meir does not find it correct to punish him. He's like a regular Gazlan. He keeps the wool and he gives you the minimal amount, the, and he gives you the wool, the, the worth of the wool, the 200 shekels, like he bought the wool off you. That's Abimeir. Abida says, no way, Jose. Abida, no, 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 we have to cancel him, punish. Abida says, justice for all, Amerikai. Abida says, what do you mean? He's, he's a mechutzah, he's a gazlan, I don't know. Abida, no, we're going to cancel him. Ima shvach, yosel yetzia. Yosel yetzia. Yetzia yosel yetzia, yosel yetzia. Which means, I will take the red paint, the red not paint, the red dyed, the, the, the kind of garment which I now don't like. I don't have to. There could be another agreement, but the ideal option is I'll take it and maybe instead of me wearing the red suit, I'll give it to, uh, I don't know, somebody else, yeah? And then I'll pay him. How much will I pay him? The game of minimal payment. As it says in Allah and Bav Metzia, your question, by the way, answers the question from a few days ago. Whoever changed from the original agreement is always going to be the underdog, the losing side. And therefore, the same game of numbers, if the expenses were less than the good result, and it's a good result, very nice red. I just don't like it. I don't like red. Yeah. So let's say the, the dyes were 100 and the suit is now 1,000. I'll only give him 100 of his paint, of his the dye, whatever. Machine can, if we say, or the other option is what? Let's say the dyes were very expensive. The dyes were more expensive than the result. I'll pay him for the result. I was paying less. Why? It is fair. He's supposed to be punished for being so lax and so uncareful, yet so careless. And therefore, according to Buda, there's a knas, and you always pay him, but pay him the least of 
the, the option. There's the third factor, which you do have to mention now to Mitrashi, the Sakhar. Let's say there's an overall agreement between us. When I actually originally went to this uh, dyer and I thought he's a nice guy, you know, I didn't really break it. Maybe he did, but you know, they give you a price. They don't break it down. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. He didn't break it down to the paint. and the, There's an overall price of how much we're going to paint. Sakhar. His uh, salary, his uh, wages, his uh, whatever he's going to get. So that is also a factor. Let's say <clears throat> I told him the Sahar is going to get his 800, let's say. So again, if that's the least of all three, there's a Sahar, there's a good result, how much it's worth now in the market, and there's the expenses. So these three, I'm always going to throw the dice with the minimum number, with a, le with a lesser number, because he has to be punished for being so lax. And therefore, I will paint because it did something, and there is shvach. It's a beautiful red, just not beautiful for me. That what I ordered. Therefore, he'll be, he'll be he'll get paid, but he'll get paid the minimum amount, whichever way you look at it. That's a beauda. Abimel says you don't give him the knas. Good. So this is the mishnah. So three cases. Case number one: complete destruction based on mikdash nechrov. Complete burn. Oh, stay with this garbage and pay me what? Pay me the temel. You destroyed my temel. Case number two. He gave you the same color of poorer quality. He has his legs. He's not a good guy. And he's also not a Mishane. He didn't change it. He doesn't have the right to keep it. If he doesn't have the right to keep it, because green is green, it's just lesser green. So what do you have to do? He'll give me the lesser poor quality class B green. And I'll pay him always the minimum because he's a bad boy. And the third case is he painted it. Wow, stunning, beautiful fashionable red, <laughs> red, green, blue, and polka dots. But I'm an Avreich. I ordered a black, black dyeing. So it did very nice, but not what I wanted. Then we have a Mechloike. So Bimeo says he keeps the new garment to himself and gives me the, just the wool. He was koine. He acquired it b'shinui. Rabbi says, no, you have to constantly, you have to give him a knas, and you have to take the garment, or you can't take the garment to yourself, you the client, and pay him the minimum. Play the game of always hitting the floor, the minimum, whichever way, because he's, he's not behaving properly. He was very uh, lax about it, unless he can prove otherwise that he was forced by Shady, I don't know. <laughs> but otherwise, that's the case. So this is a Mishnah, and we're continuing after Ellen's question. Yes. Borchut, <coughs> if you? Somebody was raising his... Very nice. Oh, moment. Frank Zigmora, we're going to get into the cases again. My ka'u, very funny word, l'chor, what's ka'u? That's, it's not a word that exists in Hebrew. Amar Ab Nachman, Omar Abba Barbar, Chana Kalbus. Ka'u means kalbus. We all know what kalbus means. Baiter, everybody knows what kalbus is, right? Frank Zigmora, my kalbus. What does kalbus mean? Omar Abba Bar Shmuel, kafre dudi. It's the, it's the, lechaper the dud. Dud is like a big pot, a calderon is called or something, yeah? A, a, a pot and the kafla is basically the leftover color that you mekanech that you wipe with. In other words, the the shiraim, the, the bottom of the pot, the bottom of the barrel, as they say, yeah, the bottom of the barrel paint, the lousy class D kind of paint. That's kafra duty. What's left over in the bottom of the things, and he's trying to be smart. He wants to save money instead of washing it in the in the sink. He's using my wool. Yeah, as if that's a shmata of his low quality, and I'm seething with anger, and he's going to get, get paid according to everybody, the lesser of any payment. Now comes the Brysa. If you miss the Mishnah, the Brysa is Mamsh, a sister Brysa of our Mishnah. This Mish Brysa is similar. A person gave wood, not wool, but wood duh, 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 to the carpenter. And I wanted a chair. It also meant Safsal, smarty pants, Mr. Smart Guy. He made instead of a kise, he made a bench out of it. Safsal also meant kise. Or what? I asked him to make a bench and he made a chair. What would Rabbi Meir say? No, it's not the Rabbi Meir says he's going to be shinui. When he's acting not on behalf of the original client, he's like a gazlan. And now what? He has to, he was koine the wood beshinui. He changed it from Safsal to chair or vice versa. Now the owner, the legal owner of the new furniture is the bad boy. And now he has to pay the original guy, the balabais for the wood. He bought the wood. 
acquired the wood b'shinui. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, no, 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 he's not getting off the hook, says Rabbi Yehuda. Ima shvach yeser le yitzia, no yeser le yitzia. Yitzia yeser le shvach, yeser le yitzia shvach, which means, says Rabbi Yehuda, this man, me'ikar adin, you may, be, you may have been right, Rabbi Meir. He should be koine, but he's a bad, he's not a bad man, by the way. I shouldn't be so uh, judgmental. Maybe he's a very nice guy, but what he did here is criminal. He basically completely changed from what he was supposed to be doing. And therefore, I will take back the item and try to deal with it. And I'm the owner, I'm the client, and I'll pay him how much? The minimum. What's the minimum? Depends if the quality of the chair could be a very nice chair. If that thousand shekel chair is worth now 1,000, and the, let's say, materials that he used, whatever, the nails, the, the, the glue, his time, however you, you look at the materials, are worth less, or he added something worth less, you pay him less. And if the one, and if the materials are worth more than the shvach, you pay him the shvach, you always pay him the least of the payable things as a knas. However, Rabbi Meir, and that's a safer, by the way, so far, we discussed the third case of our Mishnah is the first case of the Brisa. Continues the, and continues the, one second, yeah, continues the Brisa. Umoide Rabbi Meir, however, Rabbi Meir would admit to Rabbi Yudha, would agree to Rabbi Yudha in the following case. I ask you, make me a nice, beautiful chair with a design. He made an ugly chair. It's not just in the eyes of the beholder. Everybody, anybody from any art kind of, you know, artistic kind of point of view would say that chair is uglier. He made him an ugly, low quality chair. Safsal Noe, but also Safsal Kau. I asked him for a beautiful bench for the synagogue. He made a disgusting Safsal, really not what I was looking for. Then everyone agrees that what is he doing? He's not Shinui. There's no Shinu involved. He has to be paid. He'll give me the ugly piece of work and I'll pay him the minimum because it's not even knas. Why does Rabbi Meir agree here? Rabbi Meir says, don't cancel the person, leave him to be coined to be shinui. That's when there's shinui. This is not shinui. Lower quality is not called shinui. That's the name of the game. And therefore, no reason for Mr. Craftsman, who's very crafty, he should not stay with that. He'll give it to me and I'll pay him the minimum. The same system, because this is not Shinui, and I have to pay him, but of course I'll only have to pay him the minimum because he did absolutely not do what I was looking for, and therefore I'll be paid the minimum. You may ask a question, which I think the Amshu Shloma talks about. I saw it in one of the Meforshim. They say, why is it that we need both the mission and the Brisa? Why do you have to talk about both black and red? And also wool, yeah, let's say the guy asked the, the, the dyer, paint me red, dye it red, and he dyed it uh, black. And here we talk about chairs and, and, and tables and uh, benches. Why do you have to mention both cases? No, ugly is also in both cases. Ugly and nice is also in the low quality. No, red and black is compared to the table, to the chair and, and bench. No, nice and ugly is compared to the nice and ugly of the Mishnah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, not personal. No. No, 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 no. I think people you should revise it. No, no, no. Please. Again, there, each one had two cases. The mission actually had three cases. In both mission and Bryce, so you had a case of ugly and, 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 and nice. And it's not in the eyes of the older. It's like universally clear. It's less quality. And both mission and Bryce so had a case of a different product. The Mishnah was red and black uh, wool, and we had a table, uh, a chair, and a bench. So both had both cases, okay? Good? Now, yeah, now you understand? Good, good. Now comes the, comes, comes, comes what? The Amshish Shloman says, if you only told me about the red and black, I would have said paint is not really a different product. It's the same suit, just red or paint, red or black, yeah? Here, it's a completely different product. It's a, it's a chair and a bench. It's very different. While paint is only a descriptive thing of the product, but it's still a suit, it's still wool, it's still a thing, it's still a chair. So maybe one of them would not be considered a shinui. Maybe in the Mishnah, both sides would agree that he has to be paid the minimum and Rabbi Meir would not call it shinui. Even painting red and black is called shinui. And therefore, according to Rabbi Meir, he can acquire it. Okay? Right.
Now comes a fascinating, fascinating, beautiful sugya, all about colors. A very colorful sugya. Two dots. In the two dots, line starts with the shvach. Iboy lehu, iboy lehu, iboy lehu. That a question, and that question follows us from now till the end of the page. Yesh shvach samonin alatzemel, or en shvach samonin alatzemel. Is there improvement of the color in the wool? Or isn't there improvement to the color of the wool? I'm just translated to English. What on earth does that mean? I'm giving you now Rashi. Rashi gives you one very, very strong, amazing line. And that will follow us through the whole way. It's just one line. Says uh, Rashi here. The very narrow, the first narrow line in Rashi. The very first narrow line. Kloima. Chazusa milsahi olav milsa. Do looks matter or do looks don't matter? What does that mean? When I took someone's, uh, even bare shoes, I took someone's paint, the red paint, with permission, with everything, whatever, and I painted the wool. Now the wool has, listen to me carefully, he has the dye absorbed in the wool. Do we still look at the dye, at the, dye the color, as a separate financial entity, separate entity that can be paid, that can be returned, that can be dealt with? Or do we say no? It's completely absorbed now into the black hole called Temer. Cannot be properly separated from there either, right? In other words, do we still look at the paint after or the dye after it's been absorbed? Is it still called halachically separate? Or is it called now part of the wool and is not halachically separate? And there's absolutely no questions now because that philosophical question will only, you'll only begin to understand it when you'll see the Gemara's examples and the Gemara itself is going to take time. It's one of those Gemaras, which I'll call them a build-up Gemara. The Gemara is going to have a lot of trial and errors until it actually builds up a good question. Echidami, says the Gemara, what do you want from my life? Echidami, what is the case? Give me a case of your question, where question makes sense, whether the color, the dye, is a separate entity or inseparable and not called a separate entity. What are you talking about? Ilema, let's say the following case. The Goza al Samonin. Let's say the person stole Samonin originally, or what? Are plants. Everybody who learned in Cheshabbos knows how they produce colors and dyes from the plants. He took someone's herbs, plants that can be made into colors. Vedakinu, he ground them. Vetaranu, and he soaked them. And he created what? A whole new color. A dye, paint, colors, whatever you want. And now it's liquidy and nice and smooth and nice. Now he painted his wool with, or he dyed his wool with my paint, which he created. That's the question. Does he have to return the dye? Now he has dyed wool. Can I tell him, hey, mister, give back, my, give back my, my color. Give me back my dyes. Or maybe no. Or maybe he can say, mm, 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 mm. It's now in a black hole called Semel. I'm not going to give back to you. It sounds very strange, such an idea. The Gemara will attack itself many times over. But first of all, the Gemara says, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Before you come to that philosophy of, is the paint different, not different? Wait a second. Tepukle, you can come through the back door, come from a different reason. Excuse me. He anyhow was koine bishinui. He's a gazlan, which we learned about 100 times. He took something called plants or herbs, he schlepped them to his house, Kenyan Meshicha, Kenyan Chotzer, Kenyan everything, he ground them, he soaked them, he did this and that, that's a whole different story. So of course he has to give me back money. Originally, my plants were worth 100 shekel, give it back to me because he stole 100 shekel thing. Says the Gemara, okay, 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 we're changing the case. Okay, we're changing the case. Lloyd Srifa, no, we need it for another case. The Goza Samon in Shruin, you actually took Samonim, which were already ready. He stole from my machsan, ready-made paint, ready-made uh, dye, whatever you want to call it, you know, in these big uh, tubs, like in a bucket, in tambur, the bucket, he stole that from the guy. And now he painted or he dyed, whatever you want to call it, he colored it with my paint. Now, then that's a question. My, now starts a question. Yeshvach Samonim Agabe Tzemer. Do we say that the Simonin and their value, the Shvach, are looked at separately? It's Ki'il, we have two entities, Semer and Dai, and I, I'm the victim. I can say, hey, this is my Dai. 
originally was in the bucket. Now it's very nicely absorbed in your wool. I don't care. I want my collar back. You can't give it back. Give me 100 shekels. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dilma. Or maybe no. Maybe once it's dyed, it's absorbed. It's kilo not there. It's not there as a separate entity. The Omer lay. Then the thief can tell the owner, the victim, You have nothing by me. You have nothing by me. I don't have, I don't have your paint anymore. I won't give it back to you. Says Gemara, what? Is this a jungle? What's going on here? Amri, so they said that also doesn't make sense. I'm asking all the questions go through your mind, by the way. I'm a mentalist today. If let's say the Shvach Samonim is not a separate entity, let's say it's kilo absorbed into a black hole and now it's absorbed in its semer. So what? Can the Ganev say with the chutzpah, I don't have your item anymore? Namely, the victim should tell him, Thank you very much. You took it and then you threw it in the garbage. In other words, let's say somebody stole my $10,000 gold watch, which I don't have, and then he throws it, mistakenly or not, in the manhole, in the, in the sewage. So he's going to say, I don't have it anymore. So pay for it. <laughs> so what? So what's your whole philosophy over here? Whether the wool exists or doesn't, is who cares? He stole my, not my, sorry, the paint. He stole the paint to dye the color. He stole the red stuff. Now, I don't care whether it's existing or not existing. Give it back to me. Give Anyhow, you can't give me back the actual wool, uh, the actual color, because you can't retrieve it. So I'm asking for money. Give me the hundred shekel that it's worth, whether it's now by you or not by you. Who cares? Ella. The Gemara now wants to say, Gisa. The Gemara now wants to turn it around and say just the other way, which means up until now we thought that the wool not existing is the reason to actually say, I don't owe you anything because it doesn't exist. Now the Gemara wants to turn around the question. It's the same question turned around. Or let's say it the other way. Maybe you can say it like this. The Shvach of the Tzemel is not there as a separate entity. By Shlumile, which means the die, of course, you have to pay. We're not in the jungle here, we're not in the mafia house. We have to make we have to have justice. So obviously, if we say that the red paint, which was a separate entity in my mir peset, I'm the victim, in my machsan, you took it and you made it absorbed into your wool, you can't give back the actual color, right? Because it's already absorbed, it's not a separate thing, and therefore give me cash. Shlumi, pay me 100 shekels because you can't separate it anymore. Oy Dilma, or maybe yesh vach maybe now we say the other way, maybe the opposite side, you can say that the, the shvach, the color, the dye, is a separate entity. The Omer lay, now the Ganev can tell him, Aman kamach, listen, it's in front of you, shaklinu, take it. Because it's a separate entity, it can put the wool on the table, and say, would you have a claim against me? I'm so sorry that I stole it. I was not a, uh, was not a good boy. Take back your color. Because your color and your dye are a separate entity, now you can take them back. Break the Gemara. Technically, that's impossible. In my shakli, how can you take it? But so point. With soap, you can wash it off and wash off the red color with soap. Safon is like the modern Hebrew sabon, which came from really foreign languages. Safon. Yeah, so you can take it, wash it off yourself. Because I look at the die as a separate entity, I don't have to now pay you money. I'm not paying you money. Maybe it's 10,000 shekels, the red paint. I'm not paying you. Take it yourself by soaping it off, by washing it off. Break the Gemara. Ach, Akhnish the Chinese says the Gemara. Chas uh, Vashalom, the Gemara says it. Sofon, Avuri Mi Abel. The Sofon only removes the color. But it's not going to be nice paint. A shav aloy ovid. That's not called returning, right? If you wash off color or dye or whatever you want to call it off the the, the shirt, yeah, it, that's not now reusable to be good, healthy, you know, of good texture kind of paint. So that's not called a shava. So again, says the Gemara. Basically, so far the question remains philosophical. Do you look at the paint that's inside the wool as a separate entity or not? Who cares? If we talk about this law, the Gazlan should always, always, always have to give him back money. Finished. Answers the Gemara. Oh, 
finally comes the question, <laughs> not the answer. Now we are going to form a good question. Hey, base ein Yeah. Towards the end of the narrow lines. The Ganev persona, the Ganev stole both wool and dyes of Chad, of one person. He stole both. Both pieces of wool and dye were owned by Reuven, stolen by Shimon. And now he painted Reuven's semen with Reuven's dyes. Okay. And now he caught him, the police coming, lights flashing. They caught the painted wool in the house of the Ganev. The Kamehada takes him to Beisdin or without Beisdin. He gave him back the Tzemer with the dye, the color inside. And he says, two for the price of one. I shopped in Osharad, wherever. Yeah, I gave you back both. I I stole the semel, I stole the dyes, and now I'm giving you back to you both together in the shape of dyed wool. Can you play that shtick or not? That's a question now. Now that's a question. Of course, he has to give back. But here, look at the question. If we say yesh vach samonil gabet semel, if we look at the at the dye, at the color as a separate entity. The Kamehadel is someone in the Then he's right, the Ganu. If we look at the dye as a separate thing, listen, I gave you back the wool and the dye, and I don't have to pay you for the dye. No, because I gave it back to you, although it's absorbed in the Tzemel, it can still be looked at financially as a separate entity. Of course, it's absorbed, but it's there, and it's actually doing a nice job. Let's imagine for now that it did a good job. The world's going to change it later. I'm only saying it for the sake of the Saber Saoizen. Hey, the Ganev actually did a terrific job. I gave it back to you. Just be quiet because the paint now can be looked at separately. So I'm not going to coax off my and start taking out of my wallet another 200 check of cash to pay you for the dye. I returned the dye on the wool. Oi, Dilma, or maybe no. Ein Shvach Samon El Gabit Semer, first wide line. Ein Shvach Samon El Gabit Semer, Bit Semer Mahadale. No, no, no. The other side is no. Once the paint is not free and independent, once the paint or the dye are absorbed in the tzemer, the lost in the black hole called tzemer, never be separated again. And therefore, says the Balabais, uh-oh, mister, don't play games with me. You did not return me the, the, the dye. You returned me dyed wool, but not the dye itself. I wanted to dye different wool. I wanted to paint my merpeset. Now this is absorbed in the tzemer and it's not returned as per se, as by itself. And therefore I want the 200 shekel cash as in cash besides the dyed wool for the 200 shekels worth seva color you stole from me. That's the question of the Gemara. You want to say something, Sean? Says the Gemara now another question. We're building it up, but now we're getting somewhere. We're finally getting somewhere. That's a very healthy, reasonable question. Now the Gemara is attacking from the side, and the Gemara says, hey, wait a minute. Amri, they said in the yeshiva, wait a second. Why can't the Ganev, even if you say, even if you say that the Ganev owes him an extra 200 shekels, let's say, aren't those 200 shekels anyway paid because now the wool is more expensive? Beautifully red, bright red wool or black or green or whatever is worth more than plain wool. So maybe let's assume that dyed wool is worth 200 shekels, okay? So now he gave you back, let's say the wool is worth 200, plain wool, okay? It's back. Let's say the paint, the dye, the box, not the box, the tub, the, the bucket of paint was worth 200 shekels. So even if the dye is not here, but the improvement, listen carefully. The improvement that's now in the tzemer is also worth something. Go to the market. Go to the market in Ramle, in Lod, in Bechemesh. Pieces of wool undyed 200 and dyed beautifully are 400. So even if you didn't pay for the dye, dye, dye itself as it was in the bucket and it's still disappeared into a black hole, but Lemaise, you can't charge more because now the dyed wool, as an adjective dyed wool, is worth 200 shekels more. So, or, or more or less, but you should deduct it from the extra you're taking from the Ghana anyways. 
And says the Gemara, no, lo itzricha, the zal tziva. We can find such a case. Let's say zal tziva. Let's say the market price of dyed wool has plummeted. Let's say, in other words, you write conceptually, but we can find enough kamina, a case, the echitimtzi, in which what happened? Let's say the price of wool went down. And now let's say the freshly nice, beautifully dyed wool, eh, not so much in fashion. Now the fashion designers in Paris decided that white is nice. The dyed wool is not so choshuv anymore. So what? Ah, so now dyed wool as opposed to regular wool is worth 50 shekels. And the paint was worth 200 shekels, best quality. So you still have a question over 150 shekels. And we're back to square one, our question. He owes me 150 shekels because the better quality wool is worth less than actually actual color, which was a top quality. You owe me 150 shekels. That's a question on the dying table. And everybody here in the room is like a dying. We have to know, do we say that he pays him the 150 extra? Or he says, no, 150 shekels are here in the wool, kilo on top of the wool as an entity. And I'm paying it back to you. The voice, or another answer, which will may, make you laugh. Says Rashi, he took the monkey of the person. The person owned the monkey instead of a dog, which everybody here in the neighborhood owns. Yeah, he owns a monkey, something more. I think it's nicer to own a, a monkey than a dog, by the way. He owns a monkey. And now he painted the monkey's face red. He's learning face painting, and that was his model. What do you mean, Tzava Koifa? A monkey, before or after being worth the, the, the yes or not died, is not more expensive. A dyed monkey, which I know the pain is going to go off eventually, is not worth more. Or says Rashi, koifa means a kupa, a kupa shall talk, kupa, which means a box or a, or a wicker basket, which the painted wicker basket is not worth more. The kids are, we're talking here about a case that the, dye, the dyed product, the painted product is not worth more. So Mimela, you still have the same old question. Let's repeat the question. The question is as follows. Mr. Ganev Ganovsky, he stole from Mr. Reuven. What did he steal? Wool and dye. And he dyed it. He did uh, an okay job, not such an okay job. He did something. He painted it, he dyed it. Now he's giving back to the owner, says the owner, uh-oh, I now don't see the paint as a separate entity. It's absorbed in the wool. So besides the wool, he gave back to me. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit better than before. You still owe me for the dye. You still owe me for the paint, for the liquidy paint, the nice one you stole. Yes or no? That's the question. If we say that yes, if you say that the shvach is a separate entity, the paint is still looked at the separate entity. Yeah, I gave it back to you. It's absorbed, but it's there. Absorbed shvach door. Look, it's red in your eyes. Clear. Or do we say no? Or do we say no? Really, it's all absorbed and disappeared. It has no money value as of itself anymore, the paint. So now Mr. Ganev will have to fork out extra 200 shekels from his own lovely pocket. And besides the wool, will have to pay cash for the paint that he stole because that paint is not here anymore to be returned. That's the question. Here it comes. Okay, the year is over because unfortunately we're run out of time. I'm sorry I went like this, by the way. It's not personal. You know that. You always ask very good questions. And I love the questions of Alan and of everybody else in this year. And I ask you, Mechila and Tiskul and Mitzvahs, have a great day. May our day will be full of color, colors of Simcha and Toyon.